Okay, so like imagine being so good at something yeah. that a whole new ranking had to be created just for you. Wow. That's the kind of story we're diving into today. Okay. You know how some people are just naturals at yeah. sports or music? Yeah. Well, we're talking about the coding equivalent. Okay. Competitive programming. Right. Yep. And uh, the journey of someone who's arguably the greatest of all time, mm -hmm. Gennady Karakovich. Wow. Also known as Tourist. So what's fascinating about competitive programming yeah. is that it really is like the brain Olympics for coders. Oh, wow. Wow. Um, it's not just about writing code. It's about yeah. solving incredibly complex problems under intense pressure, right. pushing the limits of both speed and accuracy. So it's like you're given a puzzle yep. and whoever cracks the code the fastest and most efficiently wins. Exactly. Okay. But these aren't your average Sudoku puzzles. Right. We're talking about algorithms, right. Right. data structures, yeah. and logic problems that would make oh my gosh. most people's heads spin. Yeah. And Karatkovich consistently blows everyone else out of the water. So that's where this whole new ranking comes in, right? Yeah. I read that he broke the 4,000 ELO barrier on code forces. That's right. For those of us who aren't hardcore coders, mm -hmm. can you break down what that means? Sure. So code forces is like a premier league mm. for competitive programmers. Right. And the ELO system is how they rank players based on their performance. Gotcha. It's similar to how chess players are ranked. Okay. But the thing is, no one had ever hit 4,000 ELO on Code Forces before. Wow. They literally had to create a new rank. Really? Above the highest level just to accommodate him. That's insane. It's like they had to invent a new color for a black belt because he'd surpassed right. even the highest level of mastery. Exactly. And I read he solved over 2,600 problems on that platform alone. Uh -huh. That's some serious dedication. Absolutely. Wow. And it speaks to another important aspect of competitive programming. The sheer volume of practice and problem solving uh, experience mm -hmm. required to reach this level. Yeah. It's not just about raw talent. Mm -hmm. It's about grinding it out day yeah. after day. Yeah. Pushing yourself to solve uh, increasingly difficult problems. So Code Forces is like his main stomping ground. Yeah. You could say that. But he's also dominant on other platforms, right? Yeah, yeah. I came across something about him being a seven-star coder on CodeChef. That's right. What's the deal with that? So CodeChef is another major platform. Okay. And seven stars is the highest achievable rating. Got it. To give you an idea. Yeah. Imagine being a black belt in multiple martial arts. Wow. That's the level of versatility and skill okay. we're talking about here. Yeah. He's consistently at the top across different platforms, mm -hmm. which is incredibly rare okay starting to see a pattern here yeah this guy isn't just good right he's practically redefining what good even means he's in a league of his own in this world yeah but let's talk about some of his specific wins okay we know he's got a shelf full of trophies right oh definitely where do we even begin he's won google code jam a staggering eight times Eight wins. Eight times. Well, that's like winning the Super Bowl eight years in a row. It's an incredible feat. And I read he's also got three wins at Facebook's Hacker Cup under his belt. That's right. What are these competitions like? Think of them as the World Cup or the Olympics of coding. Wow. They attract the absolute best programmers from around the globe. Okay. And the challenges they face mm. are mind-bogglingly difficult. Mm, yeah. These aren't just coding challenges. Right. They're tests of logic problem solving mm -hmm. and creativity under immense pressure. So it's not just about being a fast typer. No. Nope. It's about strategic thinking and coming up with elegant solutions. Precisely. Uh, and what's so remarkable about Karatkovich yeah. is that he consistently comes out on top in these incredibly competitive environments. Right. He's not just fast. Mm -hmm. He's also incredibly accurate and efficient uh, in his solutions. All right. Get this. And you might want to sit down for this one. Nope. Oh. Karatkovich started winning international competitions at 11 years old. Wow, that's incredible. 11. Most kids that age are worried about dodgeball, yeah. not dominating the world of coding. That's amazing. That's unbelievable. It's almost hard to believe, right? Yeah. He's been a force to be reckoned with for over a decade now. Wow. And his early success is a testament to his natural talent yeah. and the incredible dedication he's shown from such a young age. So we're talking about someone who's basically been winning at the highest level since he was in elementary school. Essentially, yes. Wow. And his most impressive streak has to be his six consecutive gold medals at the International Olympiad 
in informatics. Okay. The IOI. Okay, for our listener who might not be familiar, yeah. can you tell us what the IOI is yeah. and why winning six golds in a row is such a big deal? So the IOI is like the ultimate proving ground for young programmers from around the world. Wow. Just qualifying for the IOI is a huge accomplishment. Yeah. And to win six gold medals, yeah. five of which were first place finishes, wow. is simply unheard of. Wow. It's a testament not only to his talent, but also to his incredible consistency and ability to perform under pressure. That's amazing. Six gold medals at the IOI. I know. It's mind-blowing to think that someone could achieve that level of dominance right. in any field, let alone something as complex as competitive programming. Yeah. You know, it's easy to get caught up in the sheer number of wins and accolades. Mm -hmm. But I'm curious about what makes Karatkovich tick. Yeah. What sets him apart mm -hmm. from other talented programmers? That's a great question. And it's something that fascinates yeah. a lot of people in the competitive programming community. Okay. One thing that stands out is his problem-solving approach. Okay. He seems to have an almost intuitive grasp mm -hmm. of algorithms and data structures, which allows him to see solutions yeah. that others might miss. So it's not just about knowing the code. Yeah. It's about understanding the underlying concepts and principles. Exactly. It's like the difference between knowing the rules of chess uh -huh. and being able to think strategically several moves ahead. Okay. Karakovich has that strategic vision. Gotcha. Which combined with his speed and accuracy yeah. makes him a formidable opponent. It's almost like he can see the matrix, right? Uh-huh. Decoding the problem yeah. before he even starts writing code. That's a great analogy. Yeah. There's a story that circulates in the competitive programming community. Okay. It said that during one competition, yeah. he solved a particularly challenging problem in just a few minutes. Wow. A problem that had stumped Who other top you? competitors for hours. Oh my gosh. When asked how he did it, yeah. he simply shrugged and said he saw the solution. Wow. Okay, so there's definitely an element of natural talent here. But I imagine that even with raw talent, it takes an insane amount of work to reach this level. Absolutely. Yeah. We're talking about years of dedicated practice. Yeah. Countless hours spent solving problems. Yeah. And a relentless drive to improve. Right. There are stories of him practicing for hours on end, even on holidays. Oh, wow. So it's that classic combination of nature and nurture, right? Yeah. The raw talent is there, uh -huh. but he's also put in the blood, sweat, and tears to hone his skill. Precisely. And that's an important takeaway for anyone listening, okay. regardless of their field. Yeah. Talent alone will only get you so far. Right. It's the dedication, the perseverance, mm -hmm. the willingness to push yourself beyond your comfort zone yeah. that truly separates the good from the great. You know, it's easy to look at someone like Karatkovich and think, yeah. well, he's just a genius. I could never do that. Right. But what you're saying is that even geniuses have to put in the work. Exactly. And what's inspiring about Karatkovich's story mm. is that it shows what's possible when natural ability meets unwavering dedication. Yeah. He set a new standard for what's achievable in competitive programming. Okay, but let's be real for a second. Sure. Competitive programming seems pretty niche, yeah. right? Yeah. I mean, how does all of this translate to the real world? Right. Why should our listener, who might not be aspiring to be the next coding champion, yeah. care about all of this? That's a fair point. Yeah. But here's the thing. Okay. The skills that competitive programmers develop. Yeah. Problem solving, logical thinking, algorithmic efficiency, right. and the ability to work under pressure right. are highly sought after in many fields, yeah. especially in tech. So are you saying that companies like Google and Facebook are basically scouting these competitions oh, yeah. for their next star engineers? Absolutely. Many competitive programmers go on to have incredibly successful careers in software development. Wow. Data science, artificial intelligence, and other cutting edge fields. Okay. They've developed a unique set of skills. Right that allows them to tackle complex problems yeah. and come up with innovative solutions. It's almost like a training ground yeah. for the minds that will shape the future of technology. That's a great way to put it. And even for those who aren't pursuing careers in tech, mm -hmm. the problem-solving skills and mental agility developed through competitive programming can be applied to any field. Absolutely. Think about it. Every profession, every aspect of life right. involves problem-solving at some level. Exactly. Okay, that makes a lot of sense. Yeah. It's not just about winning coding competitions. Right. It's about developing a mental toolkit that yeah. can be applied to any challenge you face. Exactly. But going back to 
Kretkovich. Sure. I'm still curious about his learning journey. Mm -hmm. Did he have mentors? Good question. Was he part of some elite training program? Right. How did he get to this level? That's a question that many people are trying to answer. Okay. We know that he started programming at a very young age. Yeah. And his father, who's also a computer scientist, uh -huh. played a key role in his early development. So he had that early exposure and yeah. support, which definitely must have made a difference. Right. But it's not like every kid with a computer scientist parent mm -hmm. becomes a coding prodigy. True. There's something more there. Yeah. From what I've gathered, he also sought out challenges okay. beyond the traditional classroom setting. So like outside the school. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. He participated in online coding communities, Ooh. tackled advanced problems, wow. and constantly pushed himself to learn and grow. So it sounds like a combination of natural talent a supportive environment All right. and a self-driven pursuit of mastery. Exactly. And that's a powerful lesson in itself. Yeah. It highlights the importance of seeking out opportunities to challenge ourselves. Right. To push our boundaries. Right. And to never stop learning. This whole deep dive has been incredibly insightful. It's been fun. We've gone from this image of a coding superstar to understanding the dedication and the years of hard work that go into achieving that level of mastery. Uh, absolutely. It's inspiring. Yeah. But it also makes you wonder, is there a ceiling to someone like Karatkovich's abilities? It's hard to say. What's next for him? That's a great question. And honestly, it's hard to say. Yeah. He's already achieved so much at such a young age. Right. Some speculate that he might transition into a mentoring role. Oh, okay. Sharing his knowledge and experience with the next generation of competitive programmers. That'd be cool. Others believe he might be drawn to the challenges of real-world software development. Okay. Applying his skills to solve complex problems right. in industries like artificial intelligence or cybersecurity. Oh, wow. Or maybe he'll just keep dominating competitions. It's possible. Establishing the boundaries of what's possible in competitive programming. Yeah. Who knows? Maybe they'll have to create an entirely new ranking system just for him again. You never know. Well, if our listener is feeling inspired to maybe take on their own coding Olympics, no. what advice would you give them? Well, Where should they even begin? The beauty of competitive programming is that there are so many resources available online. Okay. Websites like Code Forces and Code Chef offer practice problems, wow. tutorials, uh -huh. and even virtual competitions. Wow. There are also fantastic online communities cool. where you can connect with other programmers, right. learn from each other, and get support. So dip your toes in, try out some practice problems, yeah. and don't be afraid to ask for help. Exactly. Yeah. And most importantly, have fun with it. Okay. Competitive programming is a challenging but incredibly rewarding activity. Yeah. You'll learn new skills, expand your knowledge, mm -hmm. and who knows, you might even discover a hidden talent you never knew you had. Well, I think this deep dive has given us all a lot to think about. I agree. The world of competitive programming is more than just lines of code and algorithms. Right. It's a testament to the power of human ingenuity, mm -hmm. dedication, and the pursuit of excellence. And whether or not you aspire to be the next G Gennady Karatkovich. Right. I think there's something incredibly inspiring about his journey. Yeah. It reminds us that with passion, hard work, and a willingness to push our boundaries, mm -hmm. we can achieve amazing things. Thanks for joining us on this deep dive. Thanks for having me. And remember, stay curious.